In alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiru wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiru Whosoever Allah grants guidance, none can misguide. And whosoever chooses misguidance, none can guide. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika lah. I attest that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah who has no partners. Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluhu. And I attest that Muhammad is the final messenger of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I love Allah and I love the Messenger of Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is why I want to do da'wah. I am motivated to do da'wah. Why? Because I heard the commands of Allah in the glorious Quran commanding me to do da'wah. And I heard the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, seerah, that he used to do da'wah and now I want to do da'wah. But do I want to do it according to my whims and desires or do I want to do it according to a way Allah wants me to do? Of course, it's the second option. I want to do it according to the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants me to do it and this is why I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make me sincere, to make me humble, to allow me to seek knowledge and continuously seek knowledge and never stop seeking knowledge until I die. And this is what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa was doing when he was alive. And before he died, before he died, he said, La ilaha illallah, inna lil mawt la sakarat. There is no God but Allah. Verily, death has its agonies. So he was learning and he was teaching at the same time. He learned that death has its agonies only when he died. Before that, he didn't know. Well, he knew, but he didn't know the feeling. And he also taught it to the people and he conveyed it. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make me, you, and everybody who's watching this amongst those who seek knowledge and convey the messages until we die and to allow us to be humble because it is very important. Imagine if you are an arrogant knowledge seeker. You're not going to win. You're going to lose. It's like you're doing it for nothing. You're wasting everything. So make sure that you acquire humility and that you are sincere and make sure you know the madu, the one who you are speaking to. And this is why we are here in the Da'wah Workshop, the program on Huda TV, Alhamdulillah. It's another episode and we have our guest speakers with us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. One more time, I need more energy. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Alhamdulillah. Here we are again in another episode. We are going to talk about the types and the rights of the Mad'uwi, right? Or are we going to talk about something else? The attributes of the Mad'u and their rights. Mm -hmm. The attributes, we know that there are different attributes of Mad'uwi mm -hmm. and we need to address these attributes differently. So for example, if I see a smart, intelligent person, a person who memorizes books, knows numbers, knows authors, and I come to him with a quote without the resource, then this is weak and it's not going to help me so much, right? Exactly. So then I need to speak to him according to his knowledge. Mm -hmm. If he has a lot of knowledge, then I address him with the same, well, probably not the same level exactly, but you know, I try to you know, boost myself up a little bit, right? Exactly. At least you try you know memorize some vocabulary words here and there so that when you approach them inshallah it becomes easy exactly. and inshallah when we understand the different attributes of the mad'uwi it will be easy for us mm -hmm. so let's just name some different attributes of the mad'uwi and let's do it up here together one by one so that we can get the viewers involved with us oh viewers please <coughs> stay involved with us i want you to well, if you don't have a whiteboard, then what you could do is just pay attention to the whiteboard with us right now, inshallah, and the guest speakers who are with us who are going to share some important information about the attributes of the Mad'uween brother Abdullah. Would you like to stand up with me? Inshallah. And let's do this, inshallah. May Allah give us the success. وَمَا تَوْفِيقِ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ And my success only comes from the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what is one attribute of the Mad'uween that you could share with us today? Like... Uh as we mentioned before also like like, you, like they are classified we have status different status like unfortunately this is a human nature when you get like into has like a higher rank or like a kind of high rank or like a high status like you're being a ceo being a president king you're being like you know the manager general manager digital manager you're being like kind of arrogant you're being like kind of feeling like 
people should deal with me in a different way. I'm better than others. Um, and when you when you deal with so the higher the status, yeah, the more you could be arrogant. Not necessarily. Um, unfortunately, many people do this. Mm. Unfortunately, I mean, you shouldn't be this. Like it's just like a status. This is your job. Actually, you're having more responsibility. But it comes with like kind of arrogancy. It comes with like kind of being I don't know. Like having bad manners and mm -hmm. stuff like this, unfortunately. I see, I see. Yes. So these people need to be addressed in a different way, right? For sure. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you need, um, I'm not saying more respect and more stuff like this, but like show them. Like, for example, if you, if you deal with a CEO of a very big company, corporation, or something like this, and you know, you're telling like you to accept Islam and everything is equal. I'm like, I'm a CEO of a big company. I'm, I'm, I did lots of effort like, to, to get this position. And you uh, ask me to pray like next to someone who, who, who was a failure. Mm. You should tell them the difference. You should tell them, like, yeah. you know, in Islam, no So that you could kill the criticism. Exactly. Because the criticizer, once he, I mean, once you approach him, he's going to look at you with the eye of criticism, mm -hmm. yeah? Exactly. Even when you teach or train or when you speak in general, mm -hmm. the first thing people look at you with, not all people, but some, they look at you with the eye of criticism. Mm -hmm. They want to see some of your mistakes. Mm -hmm. So when you speak to this educated person, the CEO, and you approach him with a little weakness, then what will happen is that he may look down on you exactly. and not accept your message. Mm -hmm. So then you want to be on a similar level, yes? Exactly. So what did we say? The higher the status equals what? Uh, arrogance. Yeah, but not for all people, yeah? yeah? Don't get us wrong here. Some people, mashallah, they are CEO or presidents of a company. So and when it comes to humbleness, they have it all, mashallah. And I'm surprised by these people. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make me humble like some of these people. So, but generally speaking, a lot of them become arrogant. Why? Because mm -hmm. they're more attached to the dunya. They were given a lot in the dunya and they don't know who Allah is. So they felt that, you know, this dunya is a blessing for them. Let me get myself more attached to it. This is the reason. Yeah. So then they eventually become arrogant. Mm -hmm. So we need to approach them in a different way. Yeah. Exactly. So we, ha we have here high status equals arrogance. So give me an example, an example of somebody who had a high status in the Quran, anybody who had a high status and due to that he was arrogant. Qarun. We mentioned him like mm, previously. Qarun. Qarun. He was like kind of, he had knowledge, he had money, he had everything. That was because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted him. I was testing him. And then he like with high status, he became arrogant. He didn't mention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's yani, blessings and rewards and like gifts and everything. And he that claimed them to himself. And mm -hmm. then he became so arrogant. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yani, Subhanallah. Let me tell you what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did to Qarun. Now, Qarun. He had, during that time, he was like a, one of those scientists or one of those, you know, specialists in, in technology. So he had a lot, Karun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with so much. Allah gave him health. He gave him wealth. He gave him knowledge. He gave him abilities. And yet, Karun, one day, Musa alayhi salam came to him mm -hmm. and he said, you have to pay your zakah. Mm -hmm. And he said, why should I pay my zakah? Because Allah gave you this money. Mm -hmm. and he said, Allah didn't give this to me. I got it myself. Allah didn't give this to me. I got it myself. Do you know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did to this person? Yes. فَخَسَفْنَا بِهِ وَبِدَارِهِ الْأَرْضِ So the earth swallowed him. The earth opened up. Allah commanded the earth to open up and swallow Qarun and his house. The earth literally opened up and swallowed mm -hmm. Qarun and his house. Why? Because he thought, I am the best, arrogance. And you see, Musa was approaching him in different ways, different styles. But if Allah wrote arrogance upon a person, then nobody can guide him. Why? Because he chose to be misguided. Yes? Like, in akramakum in the Allah akhaqum. Not because of like your status, your money, everything. It's because like, you know, because you're a pious person, you're being like so humble to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to others. At the same time, Shaykh, Islam, Islam doesn't tell you like to not do anything, not to be like kind of in a high status, something like this. No, no, no. Yeah, 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 a moment qawi. Well, yeah, the, the strong like believer is like in everything. Maybe like kind of, for sure Islam encourages you to be like in high status, but don't forget, like, you know, to be like kind of humble down earth because like you know you you will go to like kind of to your grave at the end so like mm -hmm. don't be arrogant and the, well, this is like kind of one of the traits of the, the true muslim true believer of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do you know one way for you to remain humble let me share with you mm -hmm. one way for a person a human being mm -hmm. or a muslim to become humble is yeah. to prostrate to the almighty allah exactly. to put his head on the floor for allah subhanahu mm -hmm. wa ta'ala by doing so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
lifts his status up. Why? Exactly. Because he is being humble for Allah mm -hmm. Azza wa Jal. And he is putting his head down on the floor only for who? Mm -hmm. For, for Allah. Not Allah. for a human being. Exactly. As we see nowadays, people mm -hmm. are, you know, prostrating to humans and to statues mm -hmm. that cannot even talk to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yes. I mean, we know the Prophet uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam's story mm -hmm. when he spoke to his father and he told him, Ya Abati, why are you worshipping something that cannot speak mm -hmm. or hear? Hmm. And his father continues and he said, I'm going to kill you if you just, if you keep talking to me, subhanAllah. So we see that there is arrogance here and the father's approach. But Ibrahim alayhi salam, he was the child, he was the son of the father and yet he spoke to him in the best manner. He said, Ya Abati, he didn't say Ya Abi, he didn't say my father, Ya Abi, he said Ya Abati, my father in a different way in Arabic. This is to show more humbleness, to show more goodness, to show more respect to his father. Ya Abati, four times, said it four times and yet the father responded how? He said, if you don't stop, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to stone you to death. Could you tell your son this? Absolutely not, because you're a Muslim, but he was a non-Muslim and he was being addressed with the message of Islam. And when you convey the message of Islam to the people, what happens? People don't like to hear the truth, generally. Mm -hmm. Some people do, but a lot of people don't like to hear the truth. Yes, okay. So if you convey the message to Islam and you end up having enemies, don't come and choke me and say, why didn't you tell me this? <laughs> because it's not going to be a surprise. Exactly. You will have some enemies. Some people won't like you. The Messenger of Allah so I said him, he's the best example for this, right? Mm -hmm. Rasulullah they used to hurt him, harm him, beat him down when he used to convey the message of Allah. Even when he wasn't conveying the message. One day he was praying, prostrated in front of the Kaaba. As he was prostrated, what happened? Abu Jahl and the enemies came with intestines of the camel and they threw it on the back of Rasulullah as he was prostrated to Allah. And he remained in the state of sujood, prostration, for a few minutes. I don't know how long because it doesn't mention so in the narration. But then his daughter came and removed this these intestines of the camel, subhanAllah. So we see that no matter how good you are and how nice you are, you may face some difficult people mm -hmm. and you may face some arrogant people. So just prepare for those people. And inshallah, if you have a good intention, Allah will help you. Alhamdulillah. Now, we just learned one attribute, yes. right? Do you want to add another attribute that we could benefit and we could also help the viewers benefit as well? Yeah. But how about we do that after we take our break? <laughs> Insha'Allah. Sorry about that, but this is life and we have to have breaks. But no breaks from da'wah. The only break we take from da'wah is when we are in our graves. See you after the break, Insha'Allah. Salaam alaikum. <laughs> Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu salam ala rasulullah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to the da'wah workshop in the episode of the rights and the attributes of the mad'uween. Uh, we have our guests with us who are going to present more details about the attributes of the mad'uween. We just had Abdullah up here near the whiteboard talking about the higher status you have, the more arrogant you could be, or the higher status the mad'u has, the more arrogant he may be. So then prepare yourself for that. And then we have our brother. Could you introduce yourself again, please? Muhammad Farooq. Muhammad Farooq, who is going to introduce to us what? Uh, Egyptian. Uh, the topic. Yeah, the point that you are going to mention yes. of the attributes. Yeah. You are Muhammad Farooq and you are Egyptian. Yes. Alhamdulillah. Yes. Glad to know you. Yes. My name is Rayan Arab. I'm half Saudi, half American. My father is Saudi. My mother's American, just like cocktail. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. <laughs> we are going to talk about women. Okay, we're going to talk about? Women. 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 So when we approach women, then there should be a specific way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tell me more about this. Well, uh, woman, woman is emotion. Women, the first murdered uh, woman in Islam, the first murdered person in Islam was a woman. The first uh, person who converted to Islam was a woman. When the Prophet Muhammad peace and blessing be upon him was asked, who is the most beloved pe person to you? He said Aisha. And then they said, then who else? He said her father, her father. He attributed to her, I mean, he said her father. So the woman has got a status. Has got, Dom is, is, is uh, has got a status. She's uh, preparing us 
she is be behind the uh, the screen. I mean, she's she's doing a lot of efforts. So when I call woman, I have to uh, talk about her emotion. She's emotional. That's what I want to say. Great. So, would you mind standing with me so we could have a moment of emotions to yes. share with our viewers? Yes. Yes. Uh, it's right said, uh, women yes. equals emotion. Yes. Women. And we could add something to that, and that is vulnerability. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Women are. Uh, sensitive, yeah. So sensitive. So, and the Messenger Sallallahu what did he say about women? MashaAllah, that's nice writing. <laughs> you are a teacher or a trainer or something? No. Okay, but you are teaching us today about women. Yes. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, Istosu bin Nisa'i. And this means? This means that you have to deal with them gently. Mm -hmm. And he said this when? Uh, I, I don't know exactly. The last days of his life? Yeah, yeah. He said? Salah, Salah, wa ma malakat aymanakum. There's two, uh, he bequeathed, his two uh, bequeaths that he asked us to, to do is to pray in time and to be gentle to the women. Mm -hmm. Subhanallah. So when we approach women, when we give da'wah to them, okay, first of all, there's a matter we want to talk about, and that is uh, am I allowed to give da'wah to a woman? Uh, me, you as a man, mm -hmm. or if we see a woman in the street, are we allowed to give da'wah to her? And uh, we probably don't have a lot of time to cover that in this episode, but uh, in brief to sum it up, um, if, the, if the woman uh, you know, is not wearing her hijab and she has makeup and all that, and, uh, and you know that there are women da'is who can speak to her, then you could connect them, that's safer, mm -hmm. you know, to be on the safe side. Uh, but if you feel that you know there is nobody else who's going to speak to her, and you want to grab this, take this advantage, take advantage of this opportunity, and you're living in a Western country like in America or UK or in Europe, then most likely uh, it's good for you to address her, but in a well-mannered way, and to lower your gaze as much as you can, and to give da'wah to her. This is. Uh, Something many people neglect. I mean, sometimes when we go outside in our outside da'wah in Jidda, we have outside da'wah rights where we go out and give da'wah to the people in the markets and the souk and the compounds. And we focus only on the men and we don't focus on the women because we're afraid of the fitna, uh, which is good. We're, we are afraid of the fitna, that's good. <coughs> but at the same time, we don't want the women to go to hell. So somebody needs to speak to them. And if it's only us doing da'wah, uh, and not the women doing that. Well, Sheikh, have, that means I have a solution for this. Then that means we need to take action. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, what about if I call my mom, my sister, my daughter? You know, my mom, my sister, my daughter, my wife, and that's it. It's done. If you call your mom, your sister, your daughter, yeah. your wife. Yeah. This is the woman around me that I can call them without any problem. So everybody, if everybody calls. You mean to give that to your own family? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah if I call my mom to Islam. Call my sister, my wife, my daughter, so all the women are covered. Mm. Great. Yeah. We need, need to. But you will have to be patient with them. Yes. And very kind and gentle. What more ahlaka basalah? All of them command them to pray and be patient. You command the people, you command your family to pray <coughs> and to obey Allah, and we will sustain you in them. Yes. Don't worry about your risk, it's going to no. come to you. No. Alhamdulillah. It's not a business. It's not, it's not your, I mean, it's not your, you're not in charge. It's just, you just go to work and that's it. Maybe so, you don't go. So you put in some efforts for that risk and that's it. Yes. And you got to be sustained a good deeds. And uh, I mean, this could be, be on your account if you go to work. But getting money, I mean, to provide your family, it's not your business. Good. Let's sum this up. Women, emotion, vulnerability. In most cases, we shouldn't be uh, tough and harsh with the women. Uh, unless if we know the women, if they are our family members, and we tried different ways of speaking to them and it didn't work, so then we could be a little bit uh, tough and harsh, but not aggressive, not to the point where we start, you know, smacking them around uh -huh. and there's blood everywhere and, and all that, is, which is, you know, it's happening in many countries, yeah? You see the, the, the da'i, the husband, uh, he smacks his wife because she forgot to put her, you know, her, her burger on or her hijab was kind of laid back a little bit, so he starts smacking her and beating her up. This isn't necessary in Islam. We just give some nice gentle advice and that works. And women are emotional 
they can easily accept the message if we approach them in the right way, inshallah. Jazakallah khair, that was a good point. May Allah bless you and increase us in knowledge. <laughs> Shukran. Uh, yes, Brother Idris, let's try to take advantage of the time because the episode is uh, going to be done okay. soon. It's not almost done, but it's going to be done soon. So let's try to take advantage of this. Okay. Now, before you talk about the attribute, we have two more attributes. Let's talk about one of the rights, okay? And uh, these rights are very important for the sake of the mad'u. We want to make sure that we give the mad'u his due right, right? So one of the rights is to deal with the mad'u according to his belief to deal with him according to his belief. If he is Christian, don't come to him and say, Allah said don't do this, and the Messenger of Allah said don't do this, and the scholar said don't do this. That may be wrong. You could come to him and say in a wise way, uh, give him a better approach and let him know why Allah doesn't like this or Allah doesn't recommend this. <coughs> this is one right, and we're gonna go move a little bit faster. Another right, the mad'u must be informed that he is responsible for searching for the truth. If you see the mad'u, in the streets or in the market or wherever, and you don't have time to see him again, you may not see him again, and you don't have a lot of time to convey the message to him, then at least let him know that he is, uh, he is responsible for searching more and learning more about Islam. And this reminds me, uh, I just now recalled, a, uh, last month and a half ago, I was sitting with Dr. Zakir Naik, and uh, we had suhoor together, it was Ramadan. So as I was sitting with him, I said, Dr. Zakir, I want to consult you in some things. And uh, one of the things that I wanted to consult him about was the new Muslim. Uh, when he comes to Islam, am I in charge of uh, completely following up with him, calling him every single day and, you know, staying with him until the end or, or I mean, because this is going to hold me back from doing more shahadas, getting more people to come to Islam. <coughs> Dr. Zakir said that you can get more shahadas and you're not, you don't have to focus on following up with him. You could assign somebody to follow up with them so that you can focus on the shahadas. And uh, I will also add something to that. You can do both and keep it balanced, but it's good that if you are a da'i and you're eloquent in your speech, you can bring people into Islam, then focus on getting them, uh, the shahadat, into Islam and let them know that they should search for the truth. They're responsible for searching for the truth. So these are the rights, general rights of the Mad'uween. And inshallah, later on we could uh, talk more about them. Brother Idris, you have something to share with us regarding the uh, attributes of the Mad'uween. You can go ahead. Uh, just briefly to keep it short, because I know we're coming out of time, is um, some people, uh, as, as we like to use the example, are like sort of like the, the example of like a Bedouin. They, had, they tend to be uh, uh, really, really rough, um, sometimes loud, sometimes harsh. Not because they, they're trying to be rude or they don't care. It's just their nature because of what they, they, how they were brought up. It's normal for them. But when they go to an environment like maybe in a, a different environment where this isn't normal, people look at them as, you know, this person is rude and, and uh, treat them harshly and want to, you know, be very mean to them. This isn't the way the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the way he dealt with yes, people like this. Because I'll give you an example of, uh, very briefly, to sum it up, um, the better one who came. Okay, because we have one more minute. Give this example in 30 seconds. Okay. And then inshallah, we'll have to share the other attributes in another episode inshallah. All right? Very quickly, the better one came to the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and he grabbed him by his, his clothes and said, give me from what your Lord gave you. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam smiled. He grabbed him so hard and left a mark on his neck. The Prophet said, smile and give him what he wants. Subhanallah. So. This Bedouin came to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, give me everything you have. No, he give me from what you give me what to do right to me. Uh -huh. from so what give me money. Lord. In other yes. words, give yes. me money. Give me something. Yeah. And the messenger of Allah said him, upon receiving this harshness, he smiles and he says, "Give him." Yes. Right? Subhanallah. Imagine if this was you and somebody came to you and choked you and said, "Give me some money." What would you do to him? You'd probably poke him in the head or you know, like stab him in his uh, eyes with your fingers or something like that. But if we take the approach of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi we will see some great results. What did the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi do? He smiled. If you smile in your da'wah, inshallah, you can be more effective. Learn more about the attributes of the Madru in my book, Basic Da'wah 101, which you can download on rayanarab.com. Until next time, inshallah, this is it for this episode. Please stay tuned for the Da'wah workshop, and we will see you soon, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
Man. 